up, sir? <laughs> What's going on, my friends? Today is Q and A day. All right, so we've got a whole bunch of different places to answer questions. Uh, I'm trying to like minimize the time that I'm spending on each question. I realize like sometimes I'll go on like a 20 minute rant on one question. Can't do that anymore. So today for our comments, we've got um, on the shorts, commercial electric materials that just came out. Uh, drone retrieval unit says, is it feasible to switch an air compressor on and off with a relay? 220 volt. The compressor would be located in a separate building about 60 feet away. Yes, absolutely. Uh, relays can do a whole lot of cool stuff. Um, there's tons of different types of relays. Uh, contactor might be better. Just depends on what size your compressor is. If you're switching a big load, a contactor is going to be better than a relay. Um, but yes, absolutely. All right. See, that was pretty good. That was quick, right? Quick, concise doing so good. Uh, Spencer Thiel on the shorts commercial electric video that just came out, same video. Um, Spencer says it's weird having them called 1900 boxes and industrial covers where I'm at, they're called four square and raised covers. Yeah. So like there's terminology, man, there's so many different terms for every single part and material and piece and thing and tool. Um, even like we call things down here, a rough in and a trim out. So like when you're wiring a new home. We call that roughing in the house or it's the rough in phase. And then we call trim out uh, the part where you go put in plugs and switches and everything when paint and you know, all that's done. Um, but I've heard people call it like uh, uh, make ready and device out and I don't know, all kinds of stuff. Leave some comments below. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different ones. So, uh, okay. Then we've got Dream Rook Media, he says, Johnny number five on the arc fault, ground fault, and dual function circuit breakers. Thanks, dude. Glad somebody noticed. Nobody's said anything. At least I haven't read any comments yet where uh, they, they picked that up. So that's pretty awesome. Thanks for paying attention. All right, all right. <laughs> Jorge Sanchez on the shorts commercial electric materials. Spring nuts are whack, bro. I'm telling you, spring nuts suck. Uh, every time my old boss would buy a whole pack of spring nuts, I would throw them in the back of my truck and I would go to Home Depot and get cone nuts. Um, actually, not a lot of Home Depots have cone nuts. So you, more than often or more often than not, you end up just going to a supply house or something like that to get them. But it's worth it, man. Like, God, I would pay more for uh, cone nuts than to ever have to use spring nuts. It's once you get used to using them and you know how to use them, it's not that bad. It's just cone nuts. You don't have to really worry about anything. The little spring thing doesn't get in the way. They're just way more easy to work with. Plus, if you're ever on like the backside, if you've already got an enclosure mounted and you're trying to slide a cone nut through, you can easily slide it through that channel and get it where you need to. It's just such an easy thing to work with. Or if you've got something long and you need to like push it in there to get it all the way into, you know, again, like in between an already mounted enclosure, and you're just missing like one bolt, they're so much easier than having that stupid spring. And then if you cut the spring off and you try to sit it in there, it's just going to wiggle around and wobble on you the whole time. So uh, I just find spring nuts are just a waste of time. Uh, leave some comments below. If you're like an avid spring nut user and you think cone nuts are stupid, I have a feeling uh, other than those of you that are just being trolls, there's not actually anybody that's going to comment about that. And Hey, trolls are good man. You know, we need trolls. The world needs trolls for the world to go around. All right. Under the, so you want to be a foreman video, Taj R, Taj R, T-A-J-R. Uh, I'm feeling really burnt out at work. The foreman I work under is really smart, but not very organized. Um, yeah, man, <laughs> I feel you. Is it, is your burnt outness because of their not an organizedness? Um, or is there more going on at a certain point? I get it. Like if somebody's not organized, it's kind of just frustrating to work around, but as an apprentice or, you know, anybody working under them, it's your job to pick up the slack. So if you notice that you got to understand the foreman's got like 30,000 more things to deal with than you do. <laughs> and they have to worry about all your fuck ups and how the job's going, making sure all the materials are right, making sure that they're getting all the change orders. Everything's getting billed. They've got all the different contractors that they have to coordinate with. They've got the GC, they got their boss on their ass. 
and having to babysit all of y'all. So if you notice a foreman around you is lacking some things, I think the thing to do for a good apprentice is to try to pick up slack in that area and realize how fucking much they have going on in their world compared to what you do. Um, just my thoughts. Really appreciate the comment, actually. That that uh, that was a good comment. But uh, the burnout, dude, you're going to go through times of that, too, even if it has nothing to do with them. If you're just burnt out from working, that's something I don't really talk about, and I should probably do another video. I have on my Journey to Master channel, I have a video called like Burnout, Hard Work, Motivation, where I talk about this, but it was more from the being a person starting a company and how burnt out you get doing that all by yourself. Um, it just happens, man. Over a long enough period of time, you just start to feel like beat down. You're overworked, you feel underpaid, um, or even if you're paid well, you know, like you just hit that point of burnout, especially when you're doing a lot of like side work or you're doing, you know, like 16 hour days for really long periods of time, it's gonna happen. But you'll notice that you kind of go through seasons. And one thing that I found that helps is switching who you work with. Um, some of the good master electricians out there or the superintendents, I've noticed they, they switch working like people with other people. Um, a, because you need, as an apprentice, you need to be able to get multiple different kinds of experience from multiple different kinds of people, um, you know, trainers from their ideologies, but also from the environments. Because a lot of journeymen only do commercial and at the same company, some journeymen will only do residential. It's just their niche and that's what they do. So being able to work under multiple people kind of refreshes you and gives you a little bit. Um, the other thing is having something to work towards can help with that burnout. I've noticed that in my life when there's too much pattern just going on and on and on every single day and there's really nothing for me to look forward to, it's easy for me to feel burnt out because part of the burnout is really like, what the fuck am I doing? Why am I doing this? This is just like endlessly mind numbing and I'm not going anywhere and I don't feel like I'm gonna get anywhere. But if you have some kind of goal, like if you would like to in uh, two years learn about motor controls or if you'd like to take a class about you know whatever the fuck if you want to buy a house if you're trying to buy a truck uh, for me I'm moving to Colorado in two years like it's my it's it's the reason I wake up every single day I mean obviously to make videos for you fucks but <laughs> but like I have a goal man and I have figured out every single day financially what I have to hit to be able to get to that goal so now it's made existentially it's made the the reason as to why I go to work m like matter I'm actually doing live wire you know doing my own work and contracting for other companies doing consulting doing electrician you I've got a whole bunch of stuff that you guys aren't going to know about for another year that I've been doing so it's like two other companies that I'm that I am running there's a lot of stuff going on but it's okay because I've realized that I have a target figure that I'm trying to hit and a time limit and everything. And I just kind of put that as the carrot out in front of me. So all of the work and the burnout doesn't really happen anymore because I'm so fucking excited. And I'm just like, I'm checking off my list. I'm checking every single day what my bank account looks like. How much closer am I to my goal? Am I being able to transfer money into my savings? How are my investments doing? It's like, I've just got so much going on that is all about my future and where I'm going. And I've always done that. As soon as I hit a goal, boom, it's on to the next thing. You know, so I just set things in front of my my path so that I have purpose and reason behind what I'm doing. And I don't just get stuck in the rut of feeling like I'm just a fucking guy driving a truck, fixing stupid shit for people that doesn't matter. Um, so long winded, fuck, I'm trying not to do that. Anyways, uh, I hope that helps, man. All right, so CPB in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the Instagram says, uh, sorry, man, I have caught up to date with the videos lately. You've moved states, yeah, and starting again, question mark? No. <laughs> Completely wrong. Uh, no, like I just said, uh, I'm going to be moving to Colorado. So I just kind of have a renewed sense of what I'm doing. Plus with my business with Electrician U, I'm trying to change into some things. Uh, I'm trying to develop some things. So the extra funding and the extra content um, is really important to me. So I'm starting to film a whole bunch of stuff for Livewire again, just so I can kind of talk about the whole business side. Um, and it just gives me more content that's not just me sitting here in the studio. It gives me a little bit more access to being out in the field, wearing the GoPro on my chest, kind of recording what I'm doing and talking about stuff. Um, I did get a new van, so I uh, went and got a, a Ram Promaster City, just like the last van that I had in Journey to Master episode like 50, 
or 56 or somewhere around the 50s, 46 maybe, I don't know. Um, but I got a van and now I'm like putting a ladder rack on it, trying to get the whole um, shelving adjustment stuff. Um, so yes, I'm back working again. Yes, I'm back doing live wire content that you're probably not gonna see until this summer. Um, just trying to stack content. I've got so much content that I've been filming. Holy crap, dude. Like I have, I have like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours of videos. Um, that I've just been recording for the past couple of years and I'm just stockpiling all of it on hard drives. I've got terabytes and terabytes and terabytes of stuff. So now the big challenge is trying to make sure that I have uh, a schedule for when I can post everything and what content is going out where and what I can do with sponsors because that's another thing. I've got multiple sponsors and so a lot of the content that I'm making has to align with their content calendar because like, I don't know, if I'm doing something for Klein, Klein's probably got like sales objectives and are trying to sell certain tools and so that's why they want me to make a video at a certain point there's a little bit of why to you know what you see from me brian Contreras uh, just ordered my surge device thanks for all of your videos brother greatly appreciated no problem man uh curious what did you get if you see this leave a comment below let me know uh did you do square d uh what kind of enclosure do you have did you do like a type one type two um i'm sure Square D would love to hear that you put one of your or theirs in your house. Um, what else do we got? Hey, do you still need that Federal Pacific bus from Tim Labar? Um, no, dude, I don't actually. Um, I've got a Stablock bus right there. Um, I've got Zinsco. I've got Pushmatic. The things that I need still, I'm trying to make some videos in the next coming months. I need some people to help me find a um, Wadsworth any challenger uh, panel and some breakers because like really I just need the b-roll I just need some footage of them they don't even have to be sent here but like I'd rather be the one to film them because I know what I'm trying to make but anyways if any of you find those panels or breakers uh, please hit your boy up Dustin at electricianu.com let me know I'll pay for shipping um, and dude on that note if it's tons of people send me stuff and I always say like bro i will venmo you some money i'll send a check i will prepay your shipping like whatever let me know and everybody's like nah dude i just appreciate what you do thank you so anyways thank all of you guys who have sent me things um who sent me some of the stuff for the backgrounds like i really appreciate it all okay um i got underscore dan w from the gram are you still gonna work for yourself or start over uh yes to both so i've been thinking about there's some shit going on with like the word live wire with the name in Texas. Um, there's some people that have been doing some shady underhanded work that are not actually electricians. There's other companies that have been using live wire and that have tried to get a hold of my old domain and have successfully gotten a hold of my own domain. And there's people out there that are lying and saying that, yes, I'm, we work with the guy from YouTube. It's the same company. When do you want us to come out and do the work? And it's not at all associated with me. So I've been thinking about like just changing the name of the company to something completely different and starting over. But then again, like all of the reviews and everything that I have, like everything's tied to that brand. So um, plus I'm not the first person to think of Livewire. Like a buddy of mine suggested it and I was like, oh, that's dope. Boom. And I did it. And then I started looking around. And I'm like, oh, fuck, there's other live wires in like New York and, you know, Massachusetts and stuff like that. So it's not even that original for me to have come up. Um, so I'm not super tied to it. It's just that I can hit the ground running because I've already got everything established with it. Um, let me know if you guys have any thoughts about that. Any names for what you think I should name my company? <laughs> uh, yes. So anyways, to answer your question, I am... Uh, doing the live wire stuff. Um, uh, this is straight three DGE Hank Hill. Straight edge, but he used the three as an E. Pretty, uh, pretty creative there, bro. My son does that with his email address too. Um, he says, dude, if you if your route back to Texas comes through OKC, would you be down to meet up and have a meal, drink, whatever, or something, been following you for a minute? And as a second year, your channel has helped me at times. If you don't have the time, I understand completely, my dude. I know you're busy, guys, so no skin off my back. I'm actually in Moore, which is like 10 minutes south of OKC and right off I-35. When did you send this? February 2nd. Where the fuck was I? February 2nd. Oh, that's I was Colorado. Yeah. 
Um, I didn't drive, so I actually flew this time. Um, I flew up to Denver and then drove the whole state and went back to Denver and flew home. So apologize. I've actually been wanting to do some meetups. Uh, a lot of people have been suggesting because I fly like I'm always on a fucking plane. <laughs> Jesus, I fly all over the place. So every new state that I'm in, like I should be doing meetups because a bunch of people would would show up and do meetups. I have no problem meeting all of you crazy, creepy fuckers. Um, but yeah, dude, maybe uh, I'm not really in Oklahoma very much. Unless, yeah, even if I drive up to Denver, usually I try to drive up and like hit Durango. So I'm starting in the bottom left. So usually I'm going through New Mexico. I'm not hitting Oklahoma. But if I'm in Oklahoma, uh, you know, I'll, I'll do a meetup. Who else we got? Casey Rakosi. Uh, yeah, R-A-K-O-S-I. Um, this is in response to the Colorado video. A lot of comments on the Colorado stuff. Uh, basically, if you don't know, on Instagram, I was asking people, um, I'm in Colorado, are there any companies that I should check out? Anybody that does industrial or anything like that? Um, because in the next two years, I've, I've been going up to Colorado every six months just to see the different seasons, to kind of see where everything is and how the, the state functions and get familiar with the rules. And like, I'm really doing my research and figuring out where the fuck I want to live what the job market looks like and everything. Um, so I've been trying to do all of that. That way, when I get up there in two years, like I already know a whole shitload and I'm absolutely 100% positive that this is what I wanna do. But anyway, so uh, Casey, he says, I don't know anything about Colorado, but I do follow Peterson Electric on YouTube and he's in Loveland, Colorado. Um, he gave the phone number. He may have some insight for you. Congratulations in your new direction and adventure. So Peterson Electric, um, I should check him out. I've never even, I've never heard of it, but that's dope that he's got a YouTube channel. Um, maybe we can do a collaboration. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't fucking know. Josh Peterson is the fella's name. If you haven't heard from him, there's a Josh Peterson. That's a follower of mine too. That lives in Austin that I actually met at a Home Depot one time. He just randomly, I was like bent down looking at some boxes or something like fish tape. I don't, I don't remember what the hell I was looking at, but I just heard Dustin and I'm like, and I turned around, didn't know this person. I'm like, are you, you're like Dustin from uh, Journey to Master. And I'm like, yeah, who the fuck are you? <laughs> They're like, oh, I watch your channel. And I was like, oh man. Okay. That's like just creepy. It was weird. That was kind of a, that was my first ever like moment where somebody had just recognized me and walked up and talked to me. So I sat and talked to him for a little while. Anyways, um, I think that's his name, Josh Peterson. Maybe it was Josh Patterson. Anyways, Josh, sorry, bro. Um, but yeah, dude, um, I'll definitely check into that. That's this, I think that's the second person that's mentioned, uh, Peterson electric in, in Colorado. So, um, I'll have to look into that. All right. So that's it from the Grams, the Grams, uh, Let's look at Twitter. Le Twitters. We got Say Savin. S A E V E N. Say even. Uh, Dustin Selzer, thanks for your videos about switch loops. I'm I'd done them before, but they certainly made me more comfortable with the concept. Do you have any videos or schematics about running a switch loop to then power several fixtures in parallel? This is actually a comment from a long time ago. This is from. Uh, well, from a year ago. No, it's from last year in August. So really, whatever, six months ago, something like that. Um, I guess I could do a video on that. I'll add that to the list. Um, here, I'm going to do it right now. Switch loop. Call it switch loop expanded. Uh, where's my fucking video list? Dude, I have a list of videos that's so incredibly long. Just tons of different ideas. All every time one of y'all send me a, uh, an idea and it's not something that's already on my list, I add it. <laughs> but shit, dude, uh, this is like years of video ideas. Um, so what did we have? Switch loop and uh, several with several fixtures. All right. Um, Twitter, what else we got? A 
Nate. Hey there, Dustin. I'm straight out of high school and I'm very interested in becoming an electrician. The problem is I have no idea how to do that. So I have a video on Journey to Master, my other channel, how to become an electrician. Um, go check that video out. Uh, but there's a couple of different ways. Join the union, you can go to trade school, or you can just jump right into a non-union apprenticeship. Um, either way, they're all kind of like valid options. I don't recommend going to trade schools unless you just have no other choice and like you have a union program that takes two years to get into and you want to just learn a little bit more and kind of get ahead so that when you get into your apprenticeship class you just have uh you know a little bit more knowledge again you're gonna be paying a whole bunch of money but if you go into an apprenticeship either union or non-union you're gonna be paid to learn so it kind of like defeats the purpose to go pay a school for education however there are some schools in the u.s a lot in canada Actually, I think everywhere in Canada, except if you have like some special um, hours sign off from a master electrician or something that you can bypass the whole school part of it. But in Canada, I'm pretty sure most places you have to have schooling uh, and it's a requirement. So in those instances, you would have to pay for knowledge. Um, but here in the U.S., the majority of the places you don't have to go to school for. You just jump into an apprenticeship, learn on the job, get paid to make mistakes and learn. Um, and it's kind of rad. So I uh, hope that helps. Matt Peterman on... Uh Twitter. Hey Dustin, really enjoy the YouTube videos, building a house in Austin and going through the planning for all things electrical. Anything you often see homeowners forget when making selections in a new build? <sighs> Depends on the clientele. <laughs> People that are building custom homes seem to forget everything and uh, they want it all added after sheetrock and paint. <laughs> Um, like, hey, can we have 17 new electrical panels? And hey, like, we don't want any wires behind our bed because of the EMF radiation that's going to fry our brains. So can you move all those wires? <laughs> it's like, dude, the fucking sheetrock's already done. Um, what do people not think about? Again, yeah, so if it's just a basic, like, little spec home, most of the things are not even thought of because you just get options from a builder and you pre-pick everything and so the house is just kind of built for you but in custom homes a lot of people don't think about things like under cabinet lighting um, or above cabinet lighting under you know under counter lighting too like toe kick lighting and so they'll want these things added at the end because they're looking from in whatever the fuck defuck magazine that they want all these like little things added because somebody else over here has a pretty shiny thing and now they want this pretty shiny thing and they're rich so like pretty shiny things are everywhere and they're constantly coming up to you every day with oh i want more pretty shiny things hey can you add this hey can you add this um <laughs> I don't mean to sound sour about it. It's like lots more money for me. So I'm totally cool with change orders like that. But it's the timing of when that happens. It's way more convenient when you're roughing in the house, when you're wiring the house to come up with these changes um, than it is after sheetrock. That's when it kind of annoys the living hell out of us, especially if there's like a floor above and you can't really get in the ceiling. And they're like, we want one more recessed can put in that ceiling. And it's like, bro, why didn't you not think of all of the placement of your lighting way before all of this? Um, but I get it. Some people just kind of like are on the fly thinking about this kind of stuff, but it's usually lighting. Honestly, it's lighting, um, especially like accent lighting in things. Um, appliances usually don't change very much. Um, that's usually pretty specked out. Some people want TV plugs added, and that's not something that they thought about on the plan. You know, having like a plug in on every wall, but then also having a TV plug up high. Um, some people want to add sconces you know, lights above their vanity mirror in their bathrooms, or they didn't want them on the plan, but now they want them. And, you know, like there's sheetrock up. And so we have to take a two gang, turn it into a three gang, run something up all the way to try to get over there. Because normally you don't want that wired on with like cans or whatever that are in the ceiling. They want it on a separate switch. Uh, shower cans is another one. A lot of people want recessed cans in their showers. A big thing is doing chandeliers over your bathtubs. <laughs> it just seems like a really fucking bad idea. Um, always GFCI protect them. Just think about it. Somebody's standing in a tub full of water and reaches up and touches a fucking, you know, light fixture. If that light fixture, if the metal on it becomes live somehow and the breaker's not tripping because of improper grounding or whatever, ton, ton, 10 different things that could happen. Or if for some reason, they're just like, oh, that light bulb's out. I need to change that while I'm taking a bath. <laughs> I don't fucking know what these people do, but bro, there's stupid fucking people out there. Anyways, uh, yeah, so if you want a chandelier, 
above your bathtub, that'd be good to know about ahead of time. Um, landscape lighting would be a really good thing to think about. A lot of people don't think about the fact that they want landscape lighting in their flowers and to light up all their trees and stuff until way after the project's over and where you have them controlled and how they're switched, if they're switched, if they just come on with photo cells and you want them on, you know, at whenever the sun comes up and goes down, if you want them on a timer, you have to put a time clock in somewhere or a digital timer, but making sure that your landscape lighting is all figured out is a really important thing because that allows us to stub out in different corners of the house, wherever, um, so that way, if you have a landscape company coming in or I'm coming back to do the landscaping, at least I've, I'm left with something that's already outside and not having to drill through a fucking brick wall and try to get into a receptacle that's in a room and, and like tie the outside lighting to the indoor lighting. Um, not a huge deal. I do that all the time. Uh, but it's just great to think about that kind of stuff beforehand. Um, What's another thing? A lot of people don't think about lighting control systems until the very end, which is stupid, but they'll want to put like a uh, radio raw system in, like a Lutron system. And it's like, they, they have four gangs all over the house. There's just switches because there's just lights everywhere. And then they have like shades that they want to be motorized to come up and come down and be programmed with an app. But they don't think about all of this stuff until later. Or they're like, man, there's so many switches everywhere. Can't we just combine all of them and, and like, put like some kind of lighting control system in. It's like, man, I just ran five miles of fucking wire in this house. And now you're telling me you want to do a lighting control system. So think about that beforehand. Lighting control systems are actually really dope, especially like radio raw, raw two, you know, it's, it's such an easy thing to integrate into a home. It's expensive. You know, it's not like if you're trying to go on the cheap, then lighting control is not even something you're going to be thinking about. Um, but it is a way to like really minimize the amount of switching devices that you have everywhere. You have like little centralized kind of keypads. And from these locations, you can, uh, you know, hit different buttons on keypads that you can turn on, you know, zones worth of lighting. So some lights in different rooms, you can turn on individual lights, groups of lights, you can open shades, you can open garage doors, like you can do a whole bunch of stuff uh, remotely uh, through apps a lot of the time too. So like Radio Raw has the ability for you to have an app plugged into the entire system or not. Um, if you don't want to use the app portion of it, it still allows you to just kind of centrally locate in convenient areas uh, all of the switching throughout the house so you don't have like four gangs stacked all over the house, just switches everywhere. All right, so that's all I got. Trying to keep these down to 30 minutes, make them short and sweet. Um, let me know if you guys have any other comments, questions. Always leave comments below. If you don't follow me on Instagram, please follow me on Instagram um, and all of the other places. Hit the like, hit the subscribe, hit the little notification bell. I'll let you know when I come up with another one of these. Thank you guys so much. Stay tuned. Next Friday is going to be a live. Friday after that is going to be a Q&A. And it's just going to keep going like that. Every other week I change. So, And please subscribe. Seriously, seriously, before you leave, Subscribe if you're not subscribed. There's like 60% of my audience that watches that's not subscribed to the channel. It super helps me out. Um, if you love these videos, even if you hate them, if you're a hater, I still want to have you subscribed because you're obviously like a fanboy. You watch everything that I do and you watch it so that you can hate on it. So subscribe. <laughs> helps me get paid, bro. Uh, love you crazy people and I will see you in the next one. Best music and video.